Hey everyone, Matron here, bringing you another StarCraft II commentary, this time another MLG Dallas game, winner's bracket action between Torch, spawning as the Blue Terran, and Liquid TLO, the little one, spawning as the Red Zerg. This is going to be second round action, starting out on Lost Temple. Little one, a new uh, Zerg player, previously played Terran. Uh, he did unveil his Zergness at Blizzard's BlizzCon, where he was unfortunately matched up with Damaga, another Zerg player, in the first round. He did lose that matchup. Again, ZBZ can be uh, pretty kind of cheesy, cheap uh, play, so it'll be interesting to see how TLO plays in this ZVT matchup against Torch, who's a strong Terran player. But the little one did decide to switch over to Zerg. Uh, in one of the interviews I saw, he said that the skill cap for Zerg is just so much higher. He said he played some games as Terran, where at the end of the game, he felt like he had played as well as he possibly could have. But every time he gets done a game as Zerg and looks back at it, he sees quite a bit he could improve on. And for one of these uh, people that you know, play eight, nine hours a day, you always want to feel like there are things that you can improve on. You can get better and better. So the Zerg race is his way of uh, kind of raising the cap on what he can do as a player. So he's going to keep challenging himself, swapping over to Zerg now. He has been uh, practicing for about a month. He had been playing Terran in tournaments. Again, BlizzCon was the first time he had played as Zerg and went out quickly to Damaga. So we'll see how he does in this uh, MLG Dallas National Championship. Again, these are best of three series. So this will be game one. The first map of each series is predetermined depending on the round. And we'll see how these players do. TLO is going to throw down that fast hatchery before his pool. So it looks like a 14 hatch, uh, 14 pool. Might have been a 15 hatch, 14 pool. And Torch going to get out that early marine, going to shy away any uh, scout from TLO here, and maybe even go after that overlord. He is going to raise that supply depot, going to deny the scout of that drone. The drone's going to have to get out of there, or else two more shots, it's going to go down to that marine. And now the marine's going to work on this overlord, but TLO's going to be able to get it into this super hacksaw overlord position where nothing can see up here, but TLO's going to be able to see the entire natural of uh, Torch here. So Torch got up two very quick gases. Looks like he might be going the 1-1-1 build, barracks into factory, and then starport. As he does have this gas up very early, TLO for his part is getting up a gas as well and a roach warren. So it looks like the hatchery is up for TLO. He's working on just one queen right now, so not enough minerals to get out a second queen. He does have enough supply for it. See whether he does save up for a second queen as players like to get up those two queens as quickly as possible, really take advantage of the larva that that natural can produce. Looks like instead he's going to be pumping out four zerglings here, so uh, going to try to make sure that he's safe early on from any sort of maybe bunker or marine pressure. He's going to keep hitting that, uh, that watchtower there and he's going to know whether any sort of marines are moving out because of this overlord. Looks like he has another Overlord coming into the backside of uh, Torch's base. Torch, for his part, is just having these Marines all around, spread around the base. Wants to make sure he has a vision everywhere. Uh, nothing can happen. He does have this wall off, so if anything pokes up here, any Roach play, he will be able to move these, these Marines into position and defend against it. Looks like Torch is going to open up with a Hellion here. He is preparing a tech lab on this factory, and he has the starport almost done as well. So he may be going for some Banshee play, some Hellion harass into Banshees, but it looks like TLO pushed forward with a few Zerglings that the Hellion was able to take down, but the Hellion's going to do so little damage against these Roaches here, only 8 damage to non-light units. So these Roaches are now pushing at the front door. That's going to give TLO some time to get that lair up. A little bit of a misclick by Torch there. He did not have that Supply Depot up, which means he's going to have two Roaches in his base. The Roaches could focus down some Marines, but it looks like this one Roach is just going to go around and scout, and that's a very smart move by TLO. He could have taken down another Marine or two, but instead this information is going to be much more valuable. He's going to see the entire base of Torch. So Torch is not going to be able to see TLO. He's not going to be able to get past this uh, this natural quite yet with these roaches popping out. So TLO is at the information advantage right now. 
We do see Torch has psychapped himself a little bit as well at 35. He might be a little bit behind getting the supply depot up. So that's something early pressure is going to do to your opponent. Throw him off this game. Instead of getting that macro up and working, he is now supply capped, at least for a moment. He does have a Thor coming out. A little bit of a, uh, a Thor drop coming in. He did finish that medevac just in time. Liquid TLO does see this though. So he's going to be able to move these units to prepare for that Thor. He's going to bring over some Trones as well. He's going to make sure that that Thor goes down. So that Queen is going to keep working on the medevac, really going to make that Thor work if he wants to drop it. So he may have to find a different position and have to avoid those, uh, those overlords in the center for TLO if he wants to surprise drop that Thor. He is having that medevac now repaired by a few SCVs here. They're going to go right back to mining afterwards. If we look at the unit production uh, station, we do have Siege Tech coming out and the first Siege Tank for Torch. So one popular thing to do on Lost Temple is siege up around these towers. You can really cut the map in half as Terran and take multiple bases against the Zerg player who just does not have the maneuverability around those tanks. Torch now moving into the natural here. He knows this is here. A lot of players like to open up... Uh, you know, with the natural by this point, the eight minute mark, definitely expect this to be here. Gonna drop the Thor down here. See the spine crawlers well positioned to the north here, defending against that Thor. And the overlord's gonna give them sight up to the, the ridge here. The spine crawlers are gonna do bonus damage to armored units as well. Now these roaches coming in, gonna try to push back that Thor. The Thor is gonna work on this overlord, try to deny that, uh, that scouting up to the top of the upper ridge there. Spinecrawler repositioning itself, and now it looks like the uh, Torch is going to pull back that Thor. So I'd like to see him keep that Thor and keep that constant pressure. TLO did do some early pressure. It threw Torch off his game, perhaps threw TLO off his game. He was sidecapped for a little bit. He produced quite a few uh, overlords, maybe overcompensated a little bit. And now we have the Nidus network coming up for TLO. So let's see how he uses this. This is one of Zerg's ways to quickly traverse the map. Not only do they have fast units on the creep, but this Nidus network I feel is vastly underused in these games as you are gonna be able to uh, drop a Nidus network into the opponent's base or into an expansion all over the map and you can get your units multiple places quickly. Now we see a few more barracks going up for Torch here. He's going to be on three barracks soon, still pushing out tanks. He has them on the ridge. It looks like he's going to try a tank drop with the Thor this time. TLO is getting this Nidus Worm. If we look, he does have a lot of roaches, two pages of roaches, and a queen in this Nidus Worm. So it looks like uh, Torch is going to move across. He does hear this Nidus Worm, though, so he knows about it. He's going to have to drop this Thor and these tanks, get in position, siege up these tanks before the Roaches can get in. Roaches are going for the supply line right now. The SCBs are being pulled off, going to try to surround the Roaches, perhaps get a uh, repair off on these tanks and Thor, but no, the Roaches are going to take them down quickly. They have another tank on the right-hand side, able to fire at those Roaches. The Queen is going to throw down that Creep Tumor. If it completes there, then there's going to be Creep in the Terran base. He's got to focus that down. He's not able to do that, so we do have a Creep Tumor, and these Roaches now going to retreat into this Nidus network along with the Queen. So Liquid TLO just losing a few Roaches there, doing a lot of uh, harassment to Torch, and now he has a Creep Tumor, an offensive Creep Tumor in the base. We have a little bit of a miss rally here as the, uh, the forces were attacking the front door of Torch as well, though he does have this wall off. Now it looks like TLO is going to start taking the middle of the map here, at least this watchtower. Going to ward away that Hellion. Torch did get up this secret expansion on the right hand side though. So uh, TLO does know that he does not have this natural yet, but he was able to get this command center up over here. If he's able to hide this, he could take quite the advantage as these secret expansions always come back uh, and bite the other player a little bit if they're not scouting well. TLO takes down the gold rocks here, so he himself could be taking a third expansion and now it looks like he is going to be spreading overlords and a queen coming to perhaps some creep tumors being thrown down in the middle of the map here if he does go roach he wants to make sure he has creep tumors as the roaches really benefit from the creep looks like we do have the overlord spewing a little bit here and now a number of creep tumors being put down in the center of the map by this queen so TLO is going to start establishing firm map control he does have the middle we do see the tanks for Torch up on the ridge here, but he'd really like to be in this position on the tower instead, really cut off the right side of the map, protect the gold expansion so he could take it, protect this expansion. Instead, TLO is going to take 
the center of this map and really keep Torch bottled up in his base. We do see Torch over here with a Marine. going to make sure that no more uh, Nidus networks get put down here. Also, he did stop the, uh, the spread of those creep tumors. So Liquid TLO did spread a few there, but he was finally able to catch it as it was building and take it down with that Marauder, it looks like, the one kill there. More creep tumors being spread in the center. So if Torch is not careful, there's going to be creep all over the map. Now see a double expand coming from TLO. So he's going to be on this gold and this fourth as well. If we look at the income tab, pretty even right now, as Torch does have these mules working on the hidden expansion over here. Quite the advantage. He's working on his third, establishing his natural here, as well as a fourth command center. So both players doing some massive expanding right now. Looks like we have another Nidus network just came up over here. Some more roaches coming in. They're going to be trying to focus down these tanks. Now going to stay away from these tanks. Tanks are unseaging. Roaches are going to uh, are going to retreat. And again, not losing many units out of that Nidus. Do you see those Zerglings poking up a little bit at the front door? And Torch has got to feel very, uh, very uncomfortable here. He's almost under siege, the same way that Terrans like to push forward slowly at their opponent. And Zerg is doing that to him right now. So TLO applying some Terran uh, tactics to his new Zerg race here. Looks like Torch has supply capped himself once again, now queuing up two SCVs here, a few SCVs here. And again, that's something that constant pressure can really... Uh, really cause your opponent to lose and slip in the macro game. He is about to get up this fourth command center. Wonder if he's going to take down these gold rocks here or perhaps float to this expansion over here. One of the advantages Terran can do. Looks like we have a few uh, more starports coming in for t uh, Torch here. Good placement on this Overseer is going to be able to see this armory here and a lot of what's going on in Torch's base. Torch has a number of SCVs that just completed those supply depots, now not doing anything with them. Zergling is making his way, trying to take down this uh, refinery. They're able to do so, able to make their way into the uh, SCV line of Torch, finally taken down. But those Zerglings are just so cheap, any harassment you can do is really a great thing for Zerg. 